Hansons. A woman reported missing in Alabama found alive after several days. Police say she was reported missing after heading to the post office. The search for her ended when a passerby found her wrecked car. It was underneath a bridge covered in brush. She was taken to the hospital. Right now her condition is still unknown and it's not clear how she survived all that time trapped in her car. Usually department stores and Amazon don't get along, but one chain is now teaming up with the online giant. Could take advantage of this. Kohl's announced it will start accepting returns for items purchased on Amazon. Starting in July, all Kohl's stores will accept unpackaged returns from Amazon customers. It'll accept all eligible Amazon items without a box or a label and return them for free. This comes after Kohl's started carrying Amazon products in more than 200 of its stores. He just keeps on setting Jeopardy records, and now he's letting people in on just how he's doing it. James Holzhauer nearing a million dollars on Jeopardy, and in an interview with NPR, he says you have to pick your spots and then bet big. That's his strategy. He also says you've got to have a bankroll to bet. That's why he starts with big money questions. And you can watch Jeopardy tonight on Local 4 coming up at 7.30. If you do watch, that doesn't come as much of a surprise. He seems to. He, re he, he always goes to the bottom of the board. And he's super confident, yeah, too. Local camp. 4 News at 6 is next. Here's Devin. Overlooking the real key to his success, he gets them all right. Yeah, that's, that's true. He that's knows true. all of the correct answers, or questions, of course, in that case. Coming up, we're working on stories from Clinton Township and Auburn Hills. Also, the city of Detroit about to take a knock on national TV about what some see as a lack of progress in the area around the LCA. Well, Mayor Duggan had something to say about that today. You're going to hear from him just ahead. And here's Coco McAvoy. Coco. Take a look at this surveillance video. It shows a delivery driver in Warren getting carjacked by a couple of teenagers. Coming up, we'll show you more of the surveillance video and tell you how police caught the teens. Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 6 starts now. Surprising allegations all laid out in this new lawsuit. We'll take you inside the investigation as a towing company is now having to answer tough questions. Help me hang, coming up. This local dad thought he had a little more time. Oh my God! To get to the hospital with his wife. Instead, their new baby boy arrived in a parking lot. A pair of teenagers are in trouble over a carjacking outside of a Macomb County business. Some very frightening moments for a pizza delivery driver early this morning. Uh, that Hungry Howie's employee suddenly found himself at gunpoint outside the restaurant on Hoover Road in Warren. Coco McAvoy is following this story today. And Coco, this was uh, captured by more than one camera, I guess, in the area. Yes, the robbery was captured by two cameras. A neighbor has a camera on their house, and the Hungry Howie's restaurant also has a camera on the back of their restaurant. And here's what police say happened. A delivery driver was parked out back, just like this delivery driver is right here, when two teens walk up to him and demanded his car with a gun, and then they sped off. But fortunately, the delivery driver is okay. The Hungry Howie's on Hoover Road is within a neighborhood. You know, we don't ever have no problems or anything around here at all. You know, it's a good neighborhood. But early this morning, a delivery driver was carjacked at gunpoint by two 16 year olds. For something like that to happen is, uh, yeah, it's pretty crazy, especially right over here. At around midnight, the delivery driver was inside of his car out back. A teen girl walks up to him, asking for directions and to use his cell phone. Then a teenage boy comes up to him, reaches into his hoodie pocket and pulls out a gun, demanding the car. The driver gets out and goes into the store. The teens hit the building and almost hit another while speeding away. I, I'm kind of lost for words. But it wasn't the teens first attempt. They tried to carjack a family a couple of blocks away. The victim said, I, I have my baby in the car and the suspect told him it's your lucky day and then just walked away. Detective Sergeant Robert Eight says police searched the neighborhood for the teens and found three of them in the stolen car. One ran away, but two of them were caught. Ordered them down on the ground and held them there until backup arrived. Police got the car, the gun, and the two teenage thieves after the brazen carjacking. 
And the shift manager here at the Hungry Howie's says a few of the delivery drivers are now on edge, understandably, after what happened, and police are now searching for that third suspect. We'll keep you updated. Reporting live this evening, I'm Coco McAvoy, Local 4. Right, hopefully some tips will come in. All right, Coco, Sandra. A towing company under fire and now facing a federal lawsuit. Breakthrough Towing accused of illegally towing people parked in Midtown and attorneys representing some victims even claim tow drivers asked some of them if they would perform sexual acts to get their cars back. Consumer investigator Hank Winchester is live tonight and Hank, this is a big step forward for the victims. Sandra, it really is. Here's a copy of that federal lawsuit. And as you mentioned, in one scenario, a tow truck driver allegedly said to a woman whose car was being towed, I'll take it off the truck, but you have to have sex with me. By now, you've likely heard the story. Breakthrough towing, uh, targeting people either parked at this McDonald's or a nearby party store down the block. Uh, for their part, Breakthrough says what they're doing is legal. But as you will see, the victims coming together now saying that this is outrageous. This federal lawsuit lays it all out. Several victims banding together, many sharing similar stories. They allegedly parked legally, were towed by breakthrough towing, and then paid hefty fines to recover their rides. They're now taking legal action, going after the company and some businesses like McDonald's and Midtown. Attorneys claiming they're in on the deal. And they would give the McDonald's worker a kickback uh, of, of a certain amount of money, like $60 or whatever it is, for giving kind of the referral. Attorneys representing at least one victim claims that she was told if she wanted her car back, she needed to do the unthinkable. Uh, instead of paying the amount of money for cash that is normally required, she could sleep with this individual and they'd call it a deal. We've been following this story for more than a year. Victims telling us they've been taken for a ride by breakthrough. I contacted the police to report it stolen and a customer told me that they saw my car being towed. Steve Johnson, one of those who paid big just to get his car back. Also named in the lawsuit, police in Detroit and Hamtramck. Attorneys believe they ignored laws themselves, allowing this unlicensed towing company to keep the scam going. Back out here live, no comment tonight from McDonald's, which was named in the lawsuit. Also no comment from Detroit PD regarding the allegation that some are in fact getting cash kickbacks, helping breakthrough carrying out this alleged scam. We're live here tonight in Midtown. Hank Winchester, back to you. And Hank, do we think that Breakthrough is still doing this? Are they still towing cars? Well, Sandra, the latest information we have is that the Breakthrough company, the name no longer exists. That name may now have changed. And some say, attorneys at least today, say they're still hearing from victims as recently as last week, saying mm. they are being towed by a company affiliated with Breakthrough. Back to you. All right. Thank you, Hank. There is increasing scrutiny of Olympia's The District Detroit. That's the 50 blocks around Little Caesars Arena that was promised to be developed in lockstep with the arena. But as of now, neighbors and critics say they aren't seeing any new residential or business, just more parking lots. Illich Holdings did not respond to our request for a comment, but the mayor had this to say today. This deal was made before I got here, uh, but the binding commitments that are there are going to be enforced. Out of all of my priorities, more housing in downtown Detroit is not uh, the highest priority for me. Now, this issue, though, is going to get national exposure tonight in a story that is going to air at 10 p.m. on HBO's Real Sports program. In a Local 4 update for you now, the woman who police say was strangled and robbed of her $17,000 engagement ring has to wait a little bit longer before getting her ring back. Right now, Tia McLean's ring is in police custody. This is after it was discovered at a Detroit pawn shop. There is a lien on the ring, and now it has to go to a judge and through the court process before any decision can be made on the ring. Currently, there's no timetable on when she may get her ring back. An 18 year old Alpina man facing felony charges for allegedly being seen engaged in a sex act with a dog. State police say a Hubbard Lake woman was reviewing home security camera video when she saw Damian Barton in a sex act with her Bull Terrier Lab mix. After viewing the video, troopers arrested Barton. He was arraigned Monday under Michigan's law that prohibits crime against nature. As is always the case with road construction here in Metro Detroit, there is more of it ahead. I-75 has been a real mess in southern Oakland County, and soon the fun will extend north with lanes closing between South Boulevard and Baldwin Road. Jermont Terry is live with the reason why. Jermont? 
Sandra, I am standing on the Baldwin Road Bridge. It's one of 21 bridges that will be torn down and replaced in this project. A project that will most definitely tie up traffic in the day, the night, and especially weekends along the interstates where many shopping centers are. Right now, traffic along I-75 in northern Oakland County is smooth sailing. But in a week, expect this stretch of the highway in Auburn Hills to turn into this. Heavy traffic, lane shifts, and yes, those construction barrels. I take 75 every, every single day. Like, it's going to be a little rough for me. Olivia and Tyler chit-chat outside their fitness class on Baldwin Road. But come the 1st of May, there won't be much downtime when MDOT prepares to tear down and repair 21 bridges from Baldwin to South Boulevard on I-75. Yeah, it's going to be a mess. Are you ready for it? No. But drivers are going to have to get ready. Besides the bridge repair, the $21 million project will reduce lanes in both north and south bounds. We're talking two lanes during the weekday and possibly single lanes on the weekends. I mean, it's already pretty backed up as it is anyways, so it's going to be really bad. And for those shoppers trying to get to Great Lakes Crossing on Baldwin, they can't even imagine it getting worse. It's like all backed up on the weekends. So when you hear one lane, it's not looking so good out here. It's a project MDOT says is overdue and will run all the way through November. But Tyler is fortunate in one way. I'm actually moving, so I don't have to take 75 anymore, but it's going to suck for everybody else. Now that's perfect timing. Everyone else will just have to prepare to hit the brakes or find an alternate route. And you will, and you will most definitely need an alternate, now, alternate route if you are not want, looking to get caught up in this traffic jam. MDOT is also saying that throughout this project, they're going to have various ramps closed at different times. So for a complete list of what's going on, just head over to clickondetroit.com. We will most definitely keep you updated. For now, reporting live on Baldwin Road and Auburn Hills, Jermont Terry, Local 4. All right. Thank you, Jermont. Let's go ahead now and see what Lester Holt and his team are working on for nightly news tonight, immediately following our broadcast. To New York we go, where Lester's standing by live with a preview. Hi there, Lester. Hey, Devin and Sandra. Coming up, my conversation with the acting Homeland Security Secretary, what he says about the president's priorities and families separated at the border. Plus, an airbag investigation expands. More than 12 million vehicles are now included. And we'll look at the question of whether yours might be one of them. 12 million, and Lester, these are airbags that uh, may not inflate in a crash. Yeah, we remember the controversy years ago about exploding yeah. airbags. These may not work. Six manufacturers involved. The problem could have led to deaths. We'll have more details on all this when we see it coming up on NBC Nightly News. All right. Thank you, Lester. Still ahead, concerns over how effective that leftover sunscreen in your house might be when you pull it out this year. Exactly right. We'll have that in a moment. And Ben's here with whether or not we're going to need the stuff. You probably needed it for about an hour today, but I'll tell you, our highs were in the 70s. We're nowhere close to that. And wait till you see where we end up tonight. Could be frost coming with it. That's next. A baby was born last night in this parking lot. Oh, my God! 911, what's that? Just a severe emergency. I, I need help now. My baby just got born on the side of the road. I'll introduce you to the couple who has a wild story to tell. Mike and Nicole Gostovich had uh, planned to have their second baby at St. John's Hospital in Gross Point, but their son to be apparently didn't get the memo. Yeah, apparently not. He entered the world not in a delivery room, but in a parking lot at 16 Mile and Gratiot. Kim DiGiulio has the story of the night this family will never forget. I woke him up for <laughs> moral support because I was just in pain and I didn't know what to do with myself. It was almost a week past Nicole's due date. She knew it was probably time to have this baby. So they got into the car to head to St. John's. I was in so much pain and the next thing I know my water broke and he was coming out. And I told her to hold it in, not to push. They made it about a mile. Mike pulled into the closest parking lot he could find. He was ready to deliver his own baby, except he was too late. Just pulled into the parking lot and she was already holding our son in her arms. Were you scared? No, you weren't. No, I wasn't. I think I was just more like in a, I cannot believe this is happening. Mike, on the other hand, was. Oh my God! 911, what's the address of your emergency? I, I need help now. My baby just got born on the side of the road. I'm on grass yet. Completely panicked. Matter of fact, when the police and the paramedics first got there, eight of them walked up to me and was checking to see if I was okay. And I'm like, 
I'm not the one with the baby out of me on my lap. Where are they? How is the ambulance? They're all on the way, okay? They're coming as fast as they can. The ambulance arrived a few minutes after Mike called and quickly took the family to McLaren Hospital in Mount Clemens. Not exactly how the couple imagined the birth of their second child, but here they are with a beautiful, healthy baby boy weighing in at 7 pounds and 14 ounces. For any future moms out there, Nicole offers this advice. Try to make yourself okay with the fact that the plan you have in your head may not happen. Now their sweet baby boy does not have a name yet. They were talking about maybe naming him Gratiot. They weren't crazy about it, even though it would be fitting. However, he was born in a Chevy Equinox, so they were thinking Quinn could be in the running. Reporting here in Mount Clemens, I'm Kim DiGiulio, Local 4. Quinn's a great name. I'm, yes. I'm a believer in that one, but it's so funny what, what she said. Uh, don't, whatever plan, your plan is, right. it's not going to go that way. And usually it goes out the <laughs> window, right? To me, that's all right. I love how calm mom was, yeah. but dad, on the other hand, a <laughs> little worked up. It's pretty good. And we've got it on uh, tape for posterity. In good health tonight with spring break vacations already in full swing, it is the perfect time to restock your supply of sunscreen. But before you do, Dr. Frank Me George here with some important things to keep in mind that can impact the safety and effectiveness of your sunscreen. Huh? Yeah, Devin and Sandra, you know, if this is the first time this year that you're pulling out your sunscreen, and especially if you're not sure when you bought it, make sure to look at the expiration date on the label. Sunscreen does expire and it loses its protection factor. Here's some other things to consider as well. It may only be spring, but the sun is getting to summertime strength. Serum? Dermatologists suggest using a minimum SPF 30 or higher, plus broad spectrum sunscreen with both mineral and chemical UV filters. You want a product that has multiple sunscreen ingredients because they kind of play nice together and give you the best bang for your buck in terms of protection. But the FDA announced recently it's taking a closer look at the safety of some sunscreen ingredients. Chemicals like oxybenzone can be absorbed into the skin, but whether that means they cause harm is debatable. I think the FDA is doing their job. They are trying to keep us safe. But given these ingredients have been around in consumer products and used for decades upon decades, I would argue that they are safe and an effective way to prevent skin cancer. An argument echoed by many sun safety experts who estimate one in five Americans will develop skin cancer in their lifetime. Dermatologists still recommend applying sunscreen every day to all exposed skin, especially the head, hands, and legs. Now, as the FDA continues to review products, actual ingredients may change, as well as labels. They may change with active ingredients becoming clearly listed on the front of the packaging rather than in the fine print. Back to you. And it keeps getting more expensive, it seems. It does, does it? doesn't, doesn't it? And the there's such a variety yeah. of sprays and all the different lotions. But they smell a lot better now than they used to. <laughs> than they used to back <laughs> yes. in the day. You don't want to smell like a pina colada? Well, no, actually, I kind of oh, like okay, that. Okay, because yeah. you can still do that. Yeah, yeah not the yeah. chemicals. Uh, but you didn't need it today except for maybe an hour or two at the most. Uh, clouds were with us for the, primarily uh, the majority of the day. 71, uh, we beat the average by almost 10 degrees, and we started out above the average, too, at 53, although we're going to be falling below that pretty quickly uh, if your neighborhood is not already below 53. Kind of a quiet, or I should say, well, quiet and cold night, too. Uh, and it just looks cold out there on this uh, pick from Storm Pins, shot from... Uh, looking at Nine Mile Tower uh, in St. Clair Shores out there in the uh, background, but a lot of clouds and uh, we just didn't see a whole lot in the way of sunshine. We're trying to get it in fits and starts here as we close out the day, but uh, it's not going to be a whole lot until after the sun goes down. Current winds are at 15 miles an hour. We've seen those gusts as high as 30 in some spots, but as soon as that sun goes down, the winds will relax, clouds clear out, and that combination is going to allow these temperatures to really drop. So we're at 56 right now. All that warm stuff is down here to the south. DC's at 80, Pittsburgh's at 73, uh, but we will be seeing, of course, that colder air that starts filtering, filtering in behind the front that ran through midday. Not much to look at satellite wise. You can see there's a lot more clearing on the west side of the state and of course it'll be here when we don't need it which is overnight but starting tomorrow morning despite that cold start we are going to be seeing plenty of sunshine from start to finish on Wednesday Thursday looks pretty similar at least in the morning we'll see a lot of sunshine probably see an increase in clouds very late in the day but it looks like the rain is going to hold off until overnight going into early Friday morning there's not going to be a lot of it and really that's our only shot until we get into the upcoming weekend uh, 
kind of unsettled as we close out the seven day forecast. But the big story, at least tonight, is going to be the potential for frost. Look at these temperatures on our four zone forecast. 39 in Detroit officially will be at 38 at Romulus. There may be a couple spots that hang on to 40 and it'll probably be out towards the lakes. Luna Pier at 40 further inland. This is where we'll probably see some of those patchy areas of frost set up. Lenaway County a lot in our west zone further away from the water. 34 there in Howell, Fenton and Flint as you wake up tomorrow morning. So just a couple degrees away from freezing and a lot of mid 30s in our north zone too. But we will see a very rapid warm up and in fact we'll see a move of about 30 degrees from low to high tomorrow afternoon. 66 with tons of sunshine in there. Seven day forecast gets us as warm as 68 on Thursday before those uh, late night showers arrive and then we cool down for the upcoming weekend. Uh, don't forget tomorrow our first severe weather alert radio day is going to be at the Meyer in Ann Arbor. We're going to be out there for the noon show and then of course for the early shows at four, five and six. Kimberly comes back. I leave. Total coincidence. That's the hell that we went. did not I, plan I didn't that. Think about that. It's yeah. going to be a busy day all around. Yes. All right. Thanks, Ben. Stay with us. Bernie's coming up next with how Blake Griffin is dealing with the Pistons' quick playoff exit.